Hello, welcome to Zero to SSL in under five minutes. Our previous video was Zero to MQ in under five minutes, and we started out with a, an empty Linux workstation, did a complete install of MQ, and uh, managed to do that in under five minutes. And a viewer thought that was pretty cool, but sent me a challenge an email said, Hey, T Rob, you're a security guy. Can you do SSL in under five minutes? And I said, Okay, well, challenge accepted. So what I did here is I wrote down all the commands that I'll need, uh, but we're starting with a uh, a Linux workstation that has MQ8003 but no queue managers whatsoever. So uh, get ready, here we go. Let's time this, see how long it takes. So here you see 8003 and no queue managers. We're going to create them and we are not going to turn off any of the security of the queue manager. So we create it, we start it, we create it, we start it. And now we need to build some objects because if we're going to do SSL, by golly, we need some channels, don't we? If we need channels, we need listeners. So on the ash queue manager, our listeners on 1414. I'm going to create it. Next command starts it. Next thing defines the uh, transmission queue. And then there's the center channel. And then there's the receiver channel. And you'll note by looking at the receiver channel that um, we've got SSL peer filtering and we have SSL CAuth required, so we're doing mutual authenticated uh, connections. Now obviously we need to do the same thing on Birch and his listeners on 1415 and we're going to create it, start it, there's the transmission queue and there's the channels. So there we go, got a couple of queue managers and they're about ready to talk to one another, but since those channels are configured with SSL, we need certificates. Now the queue manager always points to a particular default directory, and since we just created the queue manager, you'll see that directory is empty. And we need a command to create the database. So this command creates the key database. We called it key.kdb because that's the default. Please use a better password in real life than I'm using here for our demo. And you must use the dash stash uh, option to cause it to stash the password so that the queue manager can get into the key store when it needs to. Then we run another command that actually creates the certificate itself. So again, we specify key.kdb, that's the file it goes in. The label, the default label, because we haven't changed anything, is IBM Web Serum Q and the name of the queue manager all in lowercase. Now notice that this is stashed, stash ed, right? And it says to use the stashed password that's already there, so we don't have to specify that every time or even remember it. Your key signing uh, should be, your key should be um, 2048 or larger these, uh, these days. You don't want to have anything smaller than that. And your signature algorithm should not be MD5. Please use something with SHA, preferably something with one of the SHA2 algorithms. Here we're using SHA-512 with RSA. The distinguished name, in this case we're going to keep it short and simple, we're just going to have a common name the same as the queue manager. Once we do that we have to extract the key into a file so that we can exchange it with the other queue manager. So that's what I've done here. I said go out and extract from this key database the key with this particular label and put it in a file called ash.arm use the stash password to access the KDB and there you can see ash.arm and we're going to go do that in the other um, key managers SSL directory now. So I did all the same things and we now have certificates for both key managers and certificate files for both key managers. We now have to exchange those. So this command says I want to add to the key database here locally a certificate that I'm going to call ash and go find it in this other directory and there's the ash.arm file we created a little bit ago. Uh, it is an ASCII formatted file. We use the dash stashed password so we don't have to specify one and now I'm going to get our local birch file and stick it into the other queue managers key store. Now if you're doing this in real life you'd want to refresh security on the queue manager type SSL uh, but since this queue manager is brand new and we've never tried to start a channel, uh, we don't need to do the refresh security because it will not access this key database 
until the first time we try and use it. So we're going to get from the Birch Queue Manager, and we're going to put onto the Ash Queue Manager, and hello from Ash. I guess it helps to. There we go. Hello from Ash. There you can see it happening live. Four minutes, 52 seconds. This last command, uh, incidentally, when you do an AMQS put, you tell it the queue, you tell it the queue manager to connect to, but if you put in the numeric values for your uh, open options, uh, you can also specify the remote queue manager name. So I didn't need to create a remote queue to, to push that message over there. And if we uh, go over to the other workspace, and we can pull up the queue managers. We went from Ash to Birch. So my receiver channel should be running here. There it is. And if I scroll over, there is the distinguished name and serial number from the certificate that we use. So you can tell that we are in fact using mutually authenticated SSL for this. So that's it, zero to SSL in under five minutes. Now yes, this was a contrived example, but it's here to show you that SSL is approachable. It is not as hard as it looks. The mechanics of it are actually fairly simple. Understanding how it all works is, uh, you know, it takes a, a little bit of study, but you know, you saw me run through the whole thing here in under five minutes. Uh, if you're going to do CA sign certificates, obviously it takes a little bit longer because you've got to allow for time for your CA to sign the certificate. But you know, it doesn't have to take that long on a per node basis. And if you've got queue managers that are up and running without SSL, we can establish the SSL channels between them while the other channels are still working and then turn the other channels off. So there's a very, very good migration path to go on a network that's already existing, that's not secured, to go to a fully secured SSL network. So um, if you want to work on that, let me know. Give me a holler. I'm happy to uh, give people tips and pointers. And obviously, um, you know, leave comments. Tell me what you'd like to see in the next video. Uh, you can get to my website at t-rob.net, and you can follow me on Twitter as t-d-o-t-r-o-b. Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks for watching.